welcome to Eureka. I am Gaur Raza and you are watching Eureka. It is a program which introduces an outstanding scientist to our viewers. But before that, let me take you back to when India achieved its freedom. The country was dilapidated. It had been completely destroyed economically. There was violence and very large scale violence. But there were some people like Dr. S. S. Bhatnagar, Omi Jangir Baba, Sir C. V. Raman, Meghnath Saha and many others who had a long vision, a wide outlook an outlook that wanted to build India and they knew that the new India cannot be built without science and technology. But it was a situation where they had to decide whether to do science or to build the scientific institution. This concern was repeatedly raised in the new parliament of the new nascent country. However, in this atmosphere, in the famous family of Malvia, there was a girl, a little girl, who dreamt of big dreams. Her dolls always went to Europe for higher studies. Welcome Dr. Manju Sharma to Eureka. When you were a child, you had a family which was deeply rooted into the movement. And the movement also faced a lot of repression. So you must have grown on those stories of repression by the British and the resistance movement. Do you remember some stories of your childhood which intensely affected you? Well, uh, I won't remember too much regarding the independence movement, although my mother, uh, who was the daughter of uh, Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya, uh, she was one of the very active participants uh, in the freedom movement. And both she and my father were involved. Uh, later on, my elder brother also got involved. But the only thing what Did I could do... Did you ever remember, feel insecure because your parents were in the resistance movement and the uh, government could have done anything to them? Uh, well, uh, sometimes, uh, yes. But as I said, I can't remember so much. But the only thing I remember is an atmosphere in the house of total patriotism and the feeling that uh, if anything, if uh, Gandhiji went to jail, there, were, there will be tension in the house and uh, I, I still remember that uh, uh, the food will not be there and um, everybody is very tense about it. So that much uh, uh, I, I mean, remember. remembrance I have. <clears throat> the other thing is that uh, whenever I went to uh, Varanasi, for a short visit uh, where my grandfather there. There I got uh, the feeling of uh, uh, imbibing some very good culture and some values for life, uh, importance of education. Uh, most of the time we were hearing that. So that was a very uh, sort of a learning atmosphere and one could imbibe a lot during that period. Uh, we used to uh, be taught... It was like intravenous injection yes. through which no, we you were... we were taught uh, very good yes. Sanskrit shlokas and we were asked to recite in front of our grandfather. So that was a, a, a very wonderful memory I have. And the last memory I have of my grandfather is when he was very sick and uh, the children were called one by one to come and pay, um, to go and pay their mm -hmm. homage to him. Uh, I was uh, asked, uh, because I didn't understand, but my mother said that uh, you should recite the uh, famous shloka which he used to say, Shanta Karam Bhujak Shainam, and I did that. I was a little child, and I did that for him. And uh, Your family was family of intellectuals, <coughs> and there was always atmosphere within the house where everybody would come and, and, and uh, 
the knowledge was considered to be uh, a respectable thing and a natural thing to imbibe. Do you remember some personalities which, which affected you intensely as a child? Yes, uh, you know, I was always interested to become a scientist. I think from sixth standard onwards, I started... You wanted to be scientist yes, and I wanted, that was decided. I took a decision. Okay. And uh, I was very fond of botany as a subject. And uh, I always used to remember P. Maheshwari, uh, Birbal Sahani. And you know, those personalities were always in your mind that uh, uh, they have done something. Little later, when I read about uh, Marie Curie, Mm -hmm. uh, in in our you know those uh, uh, people who are known like that in science, so right. we were asked to and read. a woman and a woman. So yeah. it it was so exciting, and I started dreaming that someone like Marie Curie can I become something like that. So you know, as a child, uh, there was some feeling of uh, uh, of I would say there was a dream always in me that uh, let's do something in science. And be like Marie Curie yes. or maybe Birbal Sahani. One works hard. P. Maheshwari. These were all, they were all icons, you know. The whole country knew all about them. How much contribution was there of your family and how much your school contributed in shaping your life? Both. 50-50. 50-50. Yes. Because Which means that if my mother was not there, I don't think I would have gone up for such higher education. Because uh, she, she always was supported very you. disciplined, very disciplined life. And she always supported the Very supportive. She go and, and my brother. Your yes, the two dreams. persons who in my life. But you did face a hurdle when you were not married because of that you were not permitted to go abroad. Yes, I did. Uh, because that was the condition my mother put. Although I got the scholarship in Kew Botanical Gardens and right. uh, to do which my... Which was a very big thing. Which was a very big thing at very that time and that he time. was my PhD examiner and he was so happy with my PhD work, Dr. Metcalf. But then my mother said, the only condition I have is unless you get married, you can't go. I said, okay. Women scientists have faced problems <coughs> and those who grew up during the period when India was getting shaped have prayed have faced real problems in pursuing science. It is only through determination that they achieve what they achieved. We'll continue. Let me take a break. We'll come back soon. Welcome back to Eureka. You dreamt of going abroad right in the childhood for a studies. And when you achieved your, uh, your dream of going abroad, you decide to come back after completion. Why did you? Yes, I'll tell you why I came back. Uh, we were both, uh, we went as postdoc, me and my husband. And we would have, uh, if we were, would have stayed on, at that time there were problems of visa. It was given for a limited period of say three years. If you want to extend and there is a little difficulty. All sorts of things were there. You know, both my parents especially were quite old. And because I was the youngest child and very late child, so my mom was very old. Same was with my father. And uh, somehow I felt that uh, if I stay there and uh, go for a longer time period, another three years visa, uh, I don't know, something may happen to my parents and I may not be able to see them. So somehow this feeling, uh, I mean, I, although I was very well settled in my lab, I was very happy in US doing work. Uh, I and you were doing excellent work, yes. excellent scientific and on work. On my way back, uh, I stayed in Europe for about six months as a visiting scientist in Copenhagen. Very enjoyable work. But then finally, both me and my husband, somehow there was some feeling inside that A, our family needs us. B, uh, at that time, the science was coming up in a very, very systematic way in the country. There were very good names in the country. So somehow we got decided that why not we go back and if we have to do good science, we can do good science here also. And you land up in Forest Research Institute yes, yes. in the country, uh, which you very soon left because of, again, personal problems and came back to Delhi. Uh, why did you decide eventually to leave doing active science and devote your time 
to to building science in the country very painful decision when i came back i, I already had my you pool officer you wanted to be scientist yes right? I not had, science ad administrator yes. i had my pool officership i could have very easily I, I there was no need for anybody to give me a job but uh, well i don't what like you to. did in science was <coughs> recognized yeah But and uh, and it affected the society itself uh, uh it must have been a very very difficult decision for you because your uh, you as a young scientist was recognized your work was yes. first rate at that time and then you switched over very to few people were selected as pool officers right. and the interviews were held in london yes. and the upsc chairman himself went to take the interviews dr damle i still remember right and uh, but A you, you know name. the problem was that uh, when i came back i wanted to join research at a particular place with a particular person and that didn't work there the, was tension yes there was tension everybody wanted and you as a bright yes. scientist to work so, with him or and her i didn't want to join the other person and uh, this created lot of problem and uh, somehow i had i knew the other person's reputation so i was not keen so i decided i want to go but there but at that time nation also needed a lot of institution builders and a lot of scientists were called upon yes. to build institutions and devote a lot of time <coughs> to administrative work because nation building is is not doing science mm. but you should know science to build a good uh, institution exactly. when you decided that you have to be now into uh, institution building and eventually nation building at that time did you think of something like biotechnology um, because you come from a botany mm -hmm. background and you are doing specific research on non leaf mm -hmm. parts of plant you see the field was not uh, recognized as much it was coming up yeah. uh, so although the dna double helix structure was already unraveled and the word biotechnology but in india barring a few laboratories of csir like ccmb hyderabad or uh, uh, the national laboratories in lucknow right. the uh, national botanical research institute or cdri some of them were doing but it was not really hardcore botany in the department of science and technology in fact uh, there was lot of discussion which i had organized and uh, i got all the people assembled there just to discuss uh, what we need to do in biology uh, life sciences ultimately biotechnology the use of these uh, biological sciences knowledge to convert it into a technology but during this period when you were shifting towards biotechnology the most promising and most respected area still is physics it's atomic energy which is being built it's isro which is being built to think of something like biotechnology which is going to lead the sciences in future did you have that 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 sense yes. at that time i had uh, in fact uh, uh, realized uh, both based on my experience abroad and a uh, lot of reading you know I, i really never divorced myself from science even when i was not working in the lab like when i was uh, working in the indian council of medical research i was writing a monograph on indian medicinal plants all the time i will visit the lab laboratory in delhi university take the photographs of the plants go and look at the plants so you know i was actually uh, not at all out of touch with my subject no, the but kind of reports that you have yes. created which which intervene and which shape the policies in science and technology is a very long list and also um, i was reading all the time melvin kelvin had uh, you know the nobel laureate at that right. time the concept of bioenergy was being developed so in in the department of science and technology we decided that uh, we should develop a program on biomass conversion into biofuels and believe me the first biomass center the two biomass centers for which i got approval i worked on it i wrote down the proposal got the approval one in madurai and one in uh, lucknow uh, national botanical research institute both the centers are even today working very well doing excellent yes. work but then so at that time i had already realized that uh, 
biological resources, the bio resources of the country need technological intervention to be really utilized in terms of actual products, new technologies, benefits to the people. Somehow this idea of conversion of the biomass into uh, real uh, Energy. technological outputs right. was my uh, you know, idea. So I was reading a lot of literature and when the National Biotechnology Board was set up, uh, we started converting many of these ideas into reality. But I had already started thinking that I wanted something much bigger. And by yeah. the time uh, the Department of Biotechnology was established, and uh, that gave a very good feeling to me, although I was not in the DBT, I was in the Planning Commission. But I started working very closely with the Secretary of the Department. In fact, all his mission we'll programs... We'll come to, um, to uh, Department <coughs> of Biotechnology because that is something very important that happened to India. India needed a number of India needed a number of institution builders, and some of the brightest scientists rose up to the occasion. I have to take a break. Don't go anywhere. We'll come back soon. Welcome back to Eureka, Dr. Manju Sharma. This debate is historical in nature and also extremely important debate that is that we are doing at the moment you decided to be to leave active science in favor of nation building and institution building there was always political support that you got for it now, do you ever look back and say that i could have been a much better scientist yes and that was your passion Many times uh, this thought has come to my mind. Uh, many times, you know, even when I retired, I thought uh, that scientists why don't, don't retire. <laughs> why don't uh, yes? Why don't I go and join a laboratory right. and uh, start working? In fact, the one area in which I was very much interested was plant tissue culture itself, and I thought, let me go and do something. But then I got involved in another institution building, and that, believe me, uh, in Ahmedabad, in Ahmedabad, the new institute which yes. I built, I really worked the like institute a scientist. Institute of Advanced Studies. Yes, I really worked about. like a scientist there. Each lab I design, what equipment, what research program uh, for all the, uh, you know, the School of Biological Sciences. The entire program was framed by me. So though you wanted to be the first-rate scientist like yes. Marie Curie you land up doing institution building in the country. Is it satisfying when you look back uh, that I, you contributed yes, a lot? I feel satisfied now when I see and I go around the country, I see a very large number of students, scientists, young people, they come up to me and say, ma'am, you gave us this project. Look, today we have got this result. I see the new centers all over the country. Each person, you know, this, today in biotechnology, the uh, real good centers which are there, uh, I sowed the seed for them. So I feel very satisfied uh, when I meet the younger people that at least, okay, I didn't get that opportunity, but today they can do some brilliant No, research. you had opportunity. You eventually took a decision yeah, to be well, a nation builder. Uh, uh, opportunity was there, but yeah. uh, that was a, not a, a very desirable yeah. way to go. So there were reasons. As I told you uh, right. earlier also, I have discussed this with you. Right. Uh, it was a very painful decision, but I decided. But once I decide something, now I wholeheartedly look, uh, work for it. Now you look back and say at least the yes. younger generation can do the kind of science that you wanted to do yourself. Yes. And also a large number of women scientists very, very whom large. I have promoted and nurtured and mentored. And today I can see them all, all over the country and then I feel so, so satisfied. In a country like India, where women are <coughs> truly suppressed even now, and I have no hesitation in saying that, your contribution to promoting women scientists getting entered into science, are, are you satisfied with the kind of uh, policy instruments that have been designed to promote 
science to a great extent that. yes i would say uh, successive governments have always paid attention uh, to this and i have been uh, i would say the architect of uh, many of the schemes not only instrumental but i i really wrote down i i, I developed the concept of how to go about for many of the schemes right. and today when i see so many young women coming up with the scholarships with the projects doing very good work it gives me a lot of satisfaction that Generally, opportunities have been created are excelling in education yes. and also you see a very large number of them coming to coming science coming in science yeah but even then there are extremely painful <laughs> filters both natural as well as social which impede their entrance into science or continuance of a scientist uh what kind of instrument uh, would you like to suggest in today's condition which will uh, improve see, the situation yeah some of the things which uh, earlier also i had thought and though these were like part time job if they have a break in the career bring them back don't go that now they are over age or something give them an opportunity to join and uh, the department of science and technology has started a very good scheme that after a break also they can come back and join and in right. fact i have been responsible for selecting these women as the chairman of the committee expert committee to a large number of women from all over the country we are trying to invite applications those who have had a break but they want to come back to mainstream of science or they want to do something for societal benefit both the aspects we look at and they must come in you see one thing we have to remember always that in this country we have to look at women scientists from two angles one is what they can do, do themselves can they excel in research they we have had very good like archana sharma and kasuri datta and many i can i can name a large number of them very brilliant very, large very brilliant dr vijayalakshmi rabindranath excellent brilliant outstanding work and at the same time there is a very large population of women 60% in rural areas farming community who are doing work and who need technological intervention training to reduce their drudgery they are under working under very difficult conditions so we have to ensure application of science and technology for them i'm working for, for both the yes, so i'm working for domain. both right. i want the women to Uh, come forward and do very good science plus i also want to promote those women who are working in the areas which are where there are difficult conditions they, their their drudgery should be reduced we should do more work you have been an institution builder and in this journey you have done your bit now the question is that the country has recognized your contribution you have been given uh, one of the highest awards padma bhushan do you feel that the country requires more awards to be given to scientists in order to promote science or scientists do not work for awards <laughs> very difficult question but i certainly feel that at least the younger people get uh, excited they are enthused if they get awards and recognition and uh, you know in the department of biotechnology uh, i started a, a fellowship national biotechnologist only for the young people right. and so even bhatnagar award has same has a yeah but nagar age, limit. age limit age limit and which so is a very good thing otherwise only and old also i started an award for Bhatnagar. women scientist yeah. uh, senior women scientist as well as uh, younger ones to do more science and i always feel that these awards are very exciting at least i always got a feeling that if you get one award you should work hard because country has recognized you and we must give back to the country uh, if we get recognition in return we can do more work in order to enthuse the the younger generation more recognition of science and science and technology is probably required would you like to give a message to the younger generation well uh, i have uh, under the auspices of the national academy of sciences india i have been working very closely for the popularization of science 
scientific uh, creation of scientific awareness, sensitization programs for young women, young children, at, uh, addressing science congresses, uh, especially the younger uh, science congress for the uh, young students. Uh, I have always told them that there is no shortcut in life. You can never do that. There always be hurdles, but you can always overcome all the problems uh, with your hard work and dedication. Your goal should be very clear. And once you have the clearly defined goal in your mind, this is what I want to do, I want to achieve. I don't think there is any difficulty if you work with seriousness and dedication. I always tell the young people that if you work hard, today you may feel frustrated, but you will see two days after there will be some good news for you, good result for you. The other important thing which I have always told my colleagues and young people in the government, that when you are working in the government, no amount of talking or giving lectures or going out and uh, <clears throat> you know, addressing various uh, convocations and all, all that we have all done. That this really doesn't uh, matter that much. You have to sit down and work on a piece of paper. You must sit down and put down all the policies, all the action points on which the decisions will be taken. Without taking a decision, no progress can be made. So decisive mind, and I tell my young people, from the very childhood, you should have a decisive mind. You should know what you want to do. You have to decide <clears throat> what you want to do in life. There are no shortcuts. There will be hurdles. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thanks. May I request you to answer the questions on behalf of uh, Rajya Sabha television to, to our viewers if they want to. Uh, so, can I invite them to send questions yes. for you? You can write to us if you have a question, comment or a suggestion. Our email address is eurekarstv at gmail.com and Dr. Manju Sharma will be very happy to answer your questions. Thank you for now. Keep watching Eureka. Every week we will come back with an outstanding scientist.